Fucking. What? Oh, okay. I just got this. This, this thing is. <laughs> Manual. Home. And getting from these teeth, but at thirty-two thousand feet with a pair of pliers that you gotta wait twenty-four hours before you know if you can do. Were to go up in flames, that would be poetic justice. Wow, that really works. You know, now that I got that out of my system, and now that I've had a chance to calm down, I'm reminded that the reason why I do this, I want, I want to make the world a better place through 3D printing. I'm always searching for those 3D printers that impress me, that improve the world by being just a little bit better than we expect them to be. And while that might not have happened in this case, let me share with you some of the things that I have seen that good 3D printer manufacturers do that enable them to get good reviews and have successful 3D printers. And at the same time, kind of talk a little bit about what the bad ones do by, you know, counter example and you know what just for fun just as a change of pace from that opening let's do this as a top 10 countdown so simon count me down don't sell crap in a box you know it used to be that 3d printer manufacturers could just put crap in a box and send it out to people and people would buy it and eat it up they would build the crap into a 3D printer, the 3D printer wouldn't work because it is, in fact, crap in a box. But that didn't bother them. They'd find the crap components, swap them out for good ones. I, I've known people who bought a kit, swapped out the garbage motors, swapped out the garbage electronics, and then swapped out the entire case and entire frame of it. There was literally nothing in their 3D printer that they got from the original kit but that kit got them started. However, you know, the sort of person who's into that sort of project is kind of dwindling a little bit. Uh, sure, there are still people who love the idea of a kit 3D printer, a, a project that is just about playing with the electronics, but those people are trickling in a lot less than they used to be. And for the most part, the people who have already done that project they don't want to do it again. They want to have something that increases their ability to make. They want something that's more reliable, that's easier, and that's just going to work out of the box. Sure, a few little upgrades is acceptable, but if it doesn't work out of the box, people's patience for crap in a box is quickly dwindling, and the 3D printer manufacturers who succeed have already figured that out. Number nine. Be aware that there is competition out there. The 3D printer manufacturers that fail seem to be completely unaware that there are other people making 3D printers at a reasonably close price that are of higher quality and work better. It's like they don't even know that Creality exists. Creality, I think, is an example of a company that's getting it right. And because of that, they're growing and they're innovating and they're able to do things that other 3D printer manufacturers can't. But these other ones that think that, well, we can just copy their specs, make something approximately the same and, and knock $25 off the price and we'll get their business. But they do so by sacrificing so much quality that the machines are only a 50-50 shot at even working. That's not the way to do business nowadays. Okay. Documentation is key. You know, I love it when I open up a box and right on the top there is the documentation for the 3D printer. But even if there's just a card that says the documentation is on the SD card, plug that into your computer, the documentation should walk people through the experience of using a 3D printer for the first time. And 
the 3D printers that do that are more successful just across the board. Uh, test your designs. Don't just put something together and hope that it'll work and then send it out to the public and think that the public will do your beta testing for you. Not anymore. The public is going to make backlash. They're going to tell people that, hey, I opened this machine and it didn't work because it had some glaring flaw in it. Manufacturers that actually use their own machines for, for some length of time, even if it's just printing benchies or something stupid, you can tell them because when you look at their listings, you can see that they've got 3D prints that are like actual 3D prints and not just like 3D renders of prints sitting on their bill plate. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that and I'm like, ooh, red flag there. Actually use your 3D printer. Do stuff with it. If you need to, just pick random stuff on Thingiverse and print it. Just be careful about attribution if you use that to sell your 3D printer. But nevertheless, test your 3D printers. 3D printer manufacturers who do this are more successful than those who just kind of throw it out to the public. Amazing. Quality assurance. You know, I've had a lot of 3D printer manufacturers tell me that they do it, but somehow or another, when the printer arrives, it just doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And I don't know if that's inadequate quality assurance or if they're just lying. I, I don't think that they're lying, but it's probably that they don't test enough of the components. And I recognize testing components is a difficult thing to do. So I don't want to be too hard on them, but you know, make sure that it's good before you send it to the consumers as best you can and, and be creative on that one. But if you don't, well, treat support seriously. Now, to be completely fair, Getting support from China is something that a consumer needs to manage their expectations about. If you send an email to China, they're getting it in the middle of the night, most likely, and you're going to have to wait 24 hours to get a response because most likely they're going to send their response while you're in asleep because it's the middle of the night for you. It just happens that way. Also, recognize that English is not always these people's strong suits. I mean, they live in another country, and so be thoughtful and considerate about that. That said, there's a lot of things that good 3D printer manufacturers do about support. One thing that I saw recently is that they put a sticker on their 3D printer that said, if you remove this sticker and open the case, you voided the warranty. Well, that's saying to the consumer that they want to handle support, but then they didn't have the infrastructure to handle support. That little sticker was writing a check that their company wasn't able to cash. And you know, another thing that 3D printer manufacturers could do is just have like a little email boomerang, you know, a little server that when it gets a support email in, it waits 10 minutes and then sends an email back to the person who sent it that just simply says like, we got your support question, Give us 24 hours to answer it. Give us a little bit more time if it's the weekend because, you know, we're, we're at home or whatever. We are going to look into it. I mean, when you receive those emails as a consumer, you know that that's an automated response, but it, it makes you feel good. It makes you think, ah, they're going to look into it. I'll give them some time. And just that that little, little bit of faith and trust and, and that can just be created by a simple automated script, so I don't see any reason not to do that. Now, the rest of this list is about getting good reviews because good reviews will just bolster a 3D printer like crazy. There is nothing better for a 3D printer than other people seeing that 3D printer being used and being used well. And so sending that 3D printer out to a couple of key reviewers who will use it, try it, and tell people about their experience is invaluable. However, well, there are ways to screw up even getting a review. For instance, don't put unreasonable requests and requirements on reviewers. I've gotten 3D printers from manufacturers and after I got it, they're like, now make sure that you get this out in some, you know, short amount of time. And I, it takes time 
to use a machine, to get to know it. If something bad happens during that time, what what do you want? You, you said you want it in, in you know a month or less. Then I'm going to have to tell people that it didn't work because you put that requirement on there. On the other hand, if I've had an opportunity, many 3D printers that I, I love now, I didn't love at the end of two weeks. I loved at the end of a month and two months where I had a chance to use it and keep using it. And I kept coming back to it because they were good machines. On the other hand, I can figure out if it's a bad machine within a short period of time, no problem. And so, yeah, you put a short requirement on there, it's more likely that I will not have as good a thing to say as a reviewer. And I recognize I'm, I'm saying this to the manufacturers, but, you know, as consumers, if you see people giving a 3D printer a bad review or maybe not a glowing review, this is why I do March Mad Mess. This is why I re-review the 3D printers because a lot of times after I've had more time with them, I have a more positive feeling about them. I have more positive experience and I can change what I say about them. Don't attempt to stop a bad review. Now, mind you, if a review is going to be bad, chances are that I will be contacting the manufacturer and saying, hey, listen, I'm having this problem and this is the best that I'm going to be able to tell people. And I have had manufacturers tell me, well, could you please just not tell people or let's just call this whole thing off and, and not do it. Well, come on. My job is not to the manufacturer. My job is to you, the viewer. My job is to tell you about these bad experiences that we've had. Now, I will admit that I've had some 3D printers that I got, they just did not work. And while I'm working on the review for them, I see other YouTubers reviewing them and saying basically the same thing that I would be saying. And in those cases, as long as that conversation is already being had, yeah, I might back off and say, you know what? I don't need to add to this conversation, but if it's not being said, my job is to you, the viewer. And so I will tell you if there is a bad machine out there and if you're having or if I'm having a bad experience and if there's a chance that you'll have a bad experience. Besides, bad reviews are good content, you know. So, hey. Number two. And if you've ignored everything else before this and if the review is going bad, please, especially... Do not offer to pay off the reviewer so that they will either say good things or not post a review. Now, honestly, I haven't had that experience, but I feel like I've gotten close a couple of times. I've had manufacturers tell me, hey, this is not going so well. Could you not do it? And I say, listen, my job is not to you. You, are, you aren't paying me at all. I don't take money for this. I just take the machine. And you didn't even give me the machine. So, you know, making a video is is my compensation for this. And I, I've, like, been afraid that they were going to respond back, well, could we pay you so that you get that compensation? And my response to them would be, uh, no, and I'm going to tell people about this. But I've, I've never actually had that experience. Still, that would be the number two thing. But there is one thing that I think that is even more important one one way that could screw it up even worse and that is Number one. make sure you're sending your 3d printer out to reviewers i recognize the past couple of steps have all been about this but this i think is is number one the most important thing that a 3d printer can do to be successful is get it in the hands of people who will tell other people about it right right like, I've contacted manufacturers and I said, hey, listen, my audience wants to know more about your printer. Can I work with you? And I've gotten crickets back from them. Not a thing. And I've also had some that, like, that conversation started, but it never finished. And I don't know what was going on with that. I keep, I keep knocking on their door going, hey, listen, I want to tell people about your printer. And they don't seem to want anybody telling people about their printer. Now, I don't know why this is, but if I were making a guess, 
Okay, think about this for a second. Think about the math involved here. If you've got a crappy 3D printer, if you know that you've got crap that you're selling to people, if you know that it's like 50-50, they're going to get a lemon or they're going to get good, would you, A, send it to a reviewer and risk getting a bad review, be them telling people, yeah, stay away from this, or B, send it to nobody and hope that you still get people who, you know, buy your machine just on the off chance that maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. You know, make it make it look good, have marketing, do a good job with it, and maybe you'll catch a few suckers, right? I'm not saying that that's what they're doing, but uh, that's what I'd do if I knew that I were selling crap. Maybe not, maybe not. I'm not, I'm not going to make any insinuations, but I would think that in a perfect world, if a consumer were looking at a 3D printer and they couldn't find any reviews on it that they would immediately that that would send up a red flag to them and that they would go ooh nobody is talking about this machine good or bad and it's not new it's been out for a little while nobody's talking about it wonder why that is and that would cause less sales for that and again look at the manufacturers that are succeeding that are doing a great job Everybody is using their machines. Everybody is talking about their machines. It started with a couple of good reviews, and then it went to an entire user base of people who are so pleased with this machine that they can't help but recommend them to people. That's how you succeed. Now, I, I'm, I'm not trying to put reviewers on any sort of pedestal here. I'm just saying that's the pattern that I've seen. But what do you think? Are there things that my list messed out? Are there things that you've seen that 3D printer manufacturers have messed up on, or are there things that you've seen that 3D printer manufacturers have just aced it, hit it out of the park, and that you think should be added to this list? Sound off in the comments and let me know what you think, but that's all that I've got. Honestly, I'm just doing this because I wanna make the world a better place with 3D printing, like I said before, and I really do believe that getting 3D printers in the hands of everybody will do that. Eh, I'm a little bit of an idealist. I recognize that, but who knows, right? Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there? And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers and if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. <laughs>